Welcome back to a very British space program as we are launching off with another rocket plane. Uh, this is a newbie, this is Rodney Hill, he's firing the engines and he is moving up into the atmosphere. He's trying to get as much speed as possible because we have another rocket plane mission to complete. Um, we are moving now towards the end of 1952. Um, please join us as we finish off the year with, with hopefully a big bang that isn't a big bang. So Rodney is flying through the atmosphere. He's burned up his engines and he's just gliding now. I've, I've got this as speedy up as, as fast as possible because there's quite a few flights going on today and there's a few rocket launches. We're trying to pack things in. Uh, it's his first landing and, and this is the uh, attempting the first proper landing um, with the wheels down of this craft. This is the uh, yeah, this is the Cochrane, the, uh, the White Arrow 2A and Rodney yeah, he actually, he comes in and he just does it. He's just beautiful. It's a beautiful little landing. Nice and calm. Completes the, the mission straight away. And we're moving on to the next step, I think. So, we've got a lot of contracts available now because um, we've been doing those rocket plane contracts. We've been doing the suborbital contracts. And it's literally just what's going to fit for us at the moment. Um, I'm trying to sort of move between rockets and rocket planes. Um Primarily because the rocket planes and, and air flying high contracts and stuff have uh, cooldown periods on them, so I'm trying not to use them all up. But we're gonna we're gonna take our our rocket plane contract, which is 20 kilometers and 550 meters per second, and we're also gonna take a uh, another biological sample mission because that's 120 kilometers and some things. So we just have to modify our previous rocket. So we take our Red Maiden 4C. We're just gonna stick a bit more of the uh, the science payload on there onto the top of our uh, onto the top of our biological sample. I don't actually think we need to do much. We just the one thing, and I'm sure it exists, is actually being able to see the total amount of everything on the craft. And I must try and play around with the with the actual uh, the mods and all the, the the interface to do that because it, at the moment I have to go and count what's in each tank, which is a little annoying, particularly as I'm trying to reuse tanks. So these tanks have been scaled and everything, and I don't want to make new tanks for each time. So Red Maiden for 4 D 4 E. I don't know what we call it. I think it's 4 D. Yeah. So we're ready to go. And in the space plane, space plane, space plane hangar, uh, I'm just checking over the craft. Now, you don't technically have to do this. Um, one of the reasons I have brought it into the hangar instead of just refueling and relaunching it is I want to make sure that it's got the landing gear up. So I've put that up. I make sure that the parachutes have been repacked just in case we need them. Um, and just make sure that the fuel is in the tanks where I want it. Make sure there's no flap changes or anything I want. And sometimes just tidy up the craft if we've had a difficult flight. So here we are, firing the engines, um, and this is uh, this is going to be Kim Kim Jarvis. She, this is her first flight. So we started off the, the day with uh, with Rodney. Kim is now getting her wings as well. She's firing up through the atmosphere, and and this is you know I sped up the first one because you know, we've got this one. Um, it's a nice gradual ascent that we want to fly. Um, Kim is just gonna just sit on that that prograde marker now and just edge it up into the atmosphere. This is not like a rocket, even though it's a rocket plane, because we will we will deviate from that that prograde target distance as time goes on really easily. Um, so yeah, we're moving on up through, and um, she's she's actually doing really well. It's a really stable craft to actually pull up when it's under 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 power it flies beautifully um, you do get a build up of some some sort of heat as it goes up but actually this craft is much more streamlined than the original white arrow uh, because of the smaller wings it's it's very very un much unchanged for that we don't have the the intake vents at the front we've got the wings swept back and much smaller and stubbier we're going to come to the peak we don't want to go too high um, because we still have limitations on this cockpit we're just going to pull the nose down a little bit there we go just to let us finish off burning the fuel a little bit we've got we got a while left to go we're getting our speed up there the important thing is although the target speed for this flight was um was uh, 550 meters per second we have a lot more left in the tank shall we say I've, I've cut those engines early because well we don't need to go any faster i don't need to risk the craft at the moment i've started doing this which is activating the brakes on descent 
um, and I do this because I just want to try and lose as much speed using the wings as possible. We do have a problem with overheating the cockpit and that, that I haven't lost one yet but they're getting awfully close and I'm a little concerned of that. I could be doing some S turns right now which I don't do which would be turning the craft to left and right because the stability of this craft is not the best on return. So we're coming down through the atmosphere and we're starting to get reheating that uh, little bit of heat building up on the nose there. I do wonder whether I should actually add something to the nose to protect it, although the fuel tanks are not great either, so it would be a bit of a, a difficulty. Even as it seems, I believe, even as we actually upgrade the fuel tanks, they don't get better heat resistance. We actually have to get the, uh, the re-entry tiled tanks to do that properly. Um, we're, we're actually losing a lot of speed nicely right now in that sort of 10 kilometer to, to five kilometer range which is really nice we're coming on a nice glide path uh, we're gonna we're gonna land well before the water today um, because I have upgraded the um, I've actually researched more of the plane tech we have now increased our distance from base where we can release our craft so we're actually releasing higher and further away which is why we're not over the water we're actually we're actually taking longer to get to it now because we're further away when we start um, we are getting a bit of heating, but I think we're going to be okay with this this landing profile. We're bleeding off speed about 200. I'd really like to get it lower than that, but this this craft has the potential to just drop like a stone if we lose too much speed. I'm trying to keep a constant sort of rate down and just yaw the nose back just a little bit to lose some speed, to get some of that energy out of the system. Um, it is all about energy right now. It's about just losing as much energy as I can whilst I maintain some of that forward speed and don't have too much sort of vertical speed drop. Um, we're bringing it down, we're bringing it down, get the aligning gear down. I'm still doing a lot of speed. I don't know if I should land at this speed, but we'll we'll do it. I think Rodney managed it at quite a high speed, so I think 200 is a nice speed to target with this craft. It seems to it seems to be very stable on landing. We're going to put that nose up just a little bit flare a little bit try and try and lose a little bit more speed and just touch oh 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 just as i say it's a stable craft to land it does that okay right at least the brakes are on i do love that the sort of sand coming up in the in the back view there yeah look at that looks cool we still got that heating i wish the cockpit would cool down a bit quicker a little bump there i think that's possibly a a little seam in the in the track of the planet there that you get but i think we are down i think we're yeah we're safe now we can just stop we're much more stable than previously so i think we will probably move on to something rockety maybe i think a rocket flight next would be a good idea yep so let's get a uh, a rocket contract there and we're going to go up. So, rockets looking okay. We've got that payload at the top there. Everything's okay. We've got the mission selected. Um, we're just aiming to get to that 120 kilometers with that 75 units and bring it all back. It's quite a large amount of stuff in it, so the parachute should be okay. But let's get the engines going, I think. Just to get that. Right, and now we're just going to wait until they spool up. And there we go. Right, this is a little, feels a little slower to start with. Um, and I'm hoping it doesn't start to tip. Um, as I said before, I mean, we're doing we're doing biological sample returns. The, the British, when they were developing and using their Black Knight rocket, which was four of these engines, they were using that for, for nuclear warhead return and, and re-entry testing. So this is quite similar to what they would be doing, although they'd probably launch them at an angle. And they'd, they'd launch them at a range of different angles and try and gather data on return and so forth. Um, I'm not going to make you watch all of this live every time. I will try and squeeze some of these in and maybe just mention them. But uh, we are getting to the point where I think sounding rocket contracts are, are pretty much done for us. And it's going to be things like biological samples and uh, taking photographs and stuff. Um, we are getting to the point of going to to outside the atmosphere as well, which I think uh, we're going to try and do with this one and see if we, although the target is 120, I'd really like to see if we can get out of the atmosphere, get some, some more science from, from space, because I think that'd be useful. But let's, uh, let's speed it up a little bit and see how we go. 
Right, so we're just moving up through the atmosphere. The engine's burning wonderfully. I have yet to have a failure in the engines, which is amazing. And um, yeah, we're just going up, and we're gonna we're gonna be into the into space, which is beautiful. So this craft will be a suborbital space visit and return. Uh, we last did that with just the um, the avionics pack, but let's get back to me as we get to the top of the turn. Right, we're just coming back through the atmosphere and we've released our, our the end of our rocket because I don't want the whole thing coming back down. Um, those fins potentially would have me flip over and that would be not good. Um, yeah, we're coming down. I think we're going to be okay. This is this is this potentially has got a lot of mass behind it, so it, it might it might have trouble with a bit of buildup of heat, particularly if it carries its speed through the upper atmosphere. I really need it to bleed off speed in the upper atmosphere as much as possible and it's not doing that right now because we're in quite a thin area i could put a, a little a little drag chute on it just to help it but i don't think it's going to be that much of a problem although we are carrying a lot of speed and come on come on come on do it slow down thank you wonderful so we've we've lost a lot of speed there we had quite a high g-force ride um let's see the rocket breaking up parachutes deploy and we're okay so this is going to be a wonderful little landing and we'll just speed through that and get it out of the way let's get back to some rocket planes i think right we are back with matthew west his engines are underway right now and this is going to be the final mission of the day of the period that we're on this is going to round out 1952 and move us into 1953 it's a night flight. You can see we can actually see the the marker ahead of us of the old wreckage of um, of the wings from our previous test flights, uh, and we're basically just flying this up to get to our uh, 20 kilometer, 700 meters per second. This will be the fastest term mission we're aiming for, and I think it is the last of the the rocket plane contracts for us for a while. We're going to move on to some of the uh, the other more complex ones involving altitude gains because we're currently staying quite low with these craft. Um, we are uh, we're doing okay. This craft, interesting, it doesn't seem to heat up in the atmosphere at all because of the profile that we take. Um, we are we're doing reasonably okay for altitude, although those next set of flights are going to require higher and higher altitude and we're just gonna we do our little spin at the top there this craft could do with modification it's not the most stable of all crafts right now um i do think we need to maybe redesign the wing structure possibly the tail possibly the whole shape of the craft we've got a lot of drag in certain places i wouldn't like and the reheating and the re, the re-entry heating that we're getting now is is not gonna be gonna help if we're going any higher because we're gonna have to take more speed with us saying that we are we, yeah, yeah. We are quite vicious on on the slow down there and it, it, there's a lot of g going through this craft and it, it's quite quite rickety at times so we're going to just try and hold it at this point in the atmosphere just to try and bleed off a little bit more speed which uh, which isn't normal and we also want to try and stay high because we want to get over the water i've returned our uh, release point to quite high uh quite high up in the atmosphere sorry quite far away but um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Let's have a look. Um, I really want to not land in the water right now uh, because although I think this craft is reaching its limit, I think uh, there's a, we could still squeeze a little bit more out of it potentially and I might just re-modify it and change it around a little bit. I do think that the Cochrane is reaching its limit for both speed and height though and we're going to have to upgrade that cockpit to allow us to go uh, even higher because I really want to get to the sort of 75 kilometer heights and this cockpit is not ready for it yet. And this engine combination and, and wing structure is just not giving us the the travel that we really need. Even if I get the uh, the increased air launch height and stuff, it's just not gonna it's just not gonna take us to, to where we need to go for some of the other the other missions. So we're sort of on a pause, waiting to develop some stuff. It is a simplistic flight plan and, and and craft design, but we will see. We will see. This you remember this is the the main fuselage of our first ever plane. So the only thing we've actually ever changed in the last sort of three four episodes is is those those front wings the rest of it is unchanged so there is there's pretty much a lot of space we can go for from there we have learned a lot about this i think the stability on return 
in particular is something I need to work on that tail plane possibly modify that quite a bit and the, the wing shape just in general so we're going to come in we're going to try for a landing this will mean that I think all of our pilots will have had a successful landing in this craft now um, which would be a positive um, we're just going to come in just touch down nice and easy get the brakes ready I want to I'm going to try and flick these on I, I landed the last one with them on all the way but we're just going to flick them on at landing and just tilt the nose and down we go and we get a little bit of wobble but you know that's nothing to be worried about there we go stick that landing slow down we do have a long slow down period and as that finishes so will this episode so if you enjoyed it please like subscribe all the things until next time have a great one